that. The spirit, now the spirit is the interesting one because this is where your new life began. This is where you're a new creation. You have had deposited in you every good thing that God had in store for you. He deposited right in your spirit. Your spirit is okay. It does not need to be repaired. It does not need to be fixed. It does not need to be renewed. It does not need to be straightened out. It has been born again. The only thing that needs to happen with your spirit is your spirit needs to grow. It needs to be developed, exercised, and brought to a maturity. So your spirit is the part that you want to learn to live from. Now here is the question. Where is your identity rooted? Is it rooted in your body? Is it rooted in your soul? Or is it rooted in your spirit man? Because the eye that fills your mouth is going to be the eye that controls your life. For example, you have the opportunity to witness to your neighbor and your body says, I do not feel good. I do not think I can do this. Your soul says, well, I've got a bad attitude and I certainly don't think that I should be trying to witness. And your spirit says, I'm well able to witness to my neighbor. So the eye that goes in your mouth is going to be the eye that begins to make the decisions. And you've got to choose between three sets of facts. At all times, you have three sets of facts to deal with at any given moment in your life. The spirit was born again, and that is where we want to live from because of the life that's in it. As a matter of fact, one of the interesting things about the spirit is the fact that it was born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. That's in 1 Peter 1, 23. And you know the law of the seed. The law of the seed is we plant a peach seed, we get... We plant an orange seed, we get... We plant an acorn and we get... Oak trees. Yes, <laughs> tripped you up, didn't I? I gotcha. <laughs> Uh, the law of the seed is you can only produce from the seed what is in the seed. Now, have you ever seen your neighbor, for instance, is going to plant a peach tree? And they say, I need to cut this seed open because I'm afraid there's no peach bark in here. Or I need to see if I can inject some peaches into this seed because I want to make sure it produces peaches. No. No. We know that inside that seed is everything that is needed to produce a full-grown peach tree with lots of peaches. It simply needs nutrition. It needs soil. It needs water, and it needs sunshine. Well, your spirit was born again of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. So if your spirit has been born again of this incorruptible seed of the word of God and your spirit grows, we have guaranteed fruit, don't we? Because you can only get from that born again spirit what is in the seed it was born from, right? I was teaching this one time and there was a little guy sitting on the front row and I said, what would happen... If your spirit were to grow to its full statue, what would you get? And this little boy on the front row says, a Christian. <laughs> I thought, wow, he is right. That's exactly what you would get. Because in your spirit is every detail of Christianity. You do not have to put in kindness. You do not have to find the love to go in there. You do not have to pull out the hate, everything is already deposited in that born-again spirit. So if you begin to learn to develop your spirit, then we have guaranteed fruit. We will have a product that your heart desires. Have you ever seen a peach tree? You walk past it and you notice that it's working real, real hard trying to push some peaches out on its limbs. No, peaches are a natural byproduct of a peach tree. 
Well, when you develop your born-again spirit and you learn to live from that core of your identity, fruit is a natural byproduct. Love, joy, peace, righteousness, all of that is a natural byproduct of your born-again spirit. So we need to develop our spirit, man. That is where our true Christianity is going to come to maturity that is where you're going to begin to bear fruit. And your spirit man is well able to operate in supernatural things. It is not uncomfortable with the supernatural realm. Whereas the natural man, I guarantee you, my natural man is always uncomfortable with the supernatural. My natural man, God can actually touch somebody's life and change their life. And my natural man will be concerned about, I wonder if that's really God. I don't know about that. I'm a little uncomfortable with it. Your natural man cannot understand spiritual things. But your spirit man, that is his territory. And he is well able to understand and handle the supernatural realm of God. One interesting thing that hit me when I was studying this is Jesus had three sets of facts about him. Jesus could have walked through Galilee saying, Hi, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. I'm a carpenter, and I'm a very good carpenter. I can build you a house. I can make you tables and chairs. I'm a nice guy. And it wouldn't have changed anybody's life. You might could have gotten a nice table and chairs from him. But when he spoke from that third set of facts, I am the bread come down from heaven. I have come to take away the sins of the world. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Then he changed the entire world. Which set of facts are you operating from? Are you operating from your body facts, your soul facts, or your spirit facts? Because at any given moment, there could be a person that's going to cross your path. And if you're operating from body facts, soul facts, you'll miss it. But if you're operating from that spirit set of facts, then the Holy Spirit would lead you to do or say the very thing that could change their life. Spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, I pray that your entire spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a three-part being. You are made of three separate parts, but there's only one I. And you need to move that identity to the spirit man and